This video is going to be the first in a four part series on building this DIY CNC router that I've designed. In this introduction video I'm first going to discuss why I'm building a new CNC machine, then I'm going to go for an overview of the design and my goals for the CNC machine once it's complete, then I'm going to cover all of the different parts that I've bought and why I've decided on those parts. So I got my first CNC machine back in 2015 when Inventables sent me their X-Carve machine for review and that's how I got into CNC machining. For those of you that don't know, the X-Carve is a really popular kit DIY open source CNC machine that you put together yourself and Inventables sent it to a load of different YouTubers to get them into CNC machining as a promotion and I think it was quite a good idea from them. It got them a lot of publicity and it meant that the YouTubers in turn got a free machine. In my opinion, a cheap, light duty, open source CNC machine like this is the best way to get into machining because it's upgradable and it allows you to make all of the mistakes that if you made on a more expensive machine like a Tormac or a Haas would completely destroy the machine. Like I can't count the amount of times that I've crashed this thing and it's been absolutely fine. So receiving this machine from Inventables was an amazing opportunity for me and it really opened my eyes to what CNC machining could do and got me really interested in it and I'm so grateful that they sent it to me because I would have maybe never got into it otherwise. One thing that was great about the machine was it was open source and it was really easy to upgrade parts and make the machine stronger. So I started doing as many upgrades as I could as I started to outgrow the capabilities of the machine. I upgraded the spindle, made the axes stiffer and also upgraded the control electronics to Mark III using dedicated stepper motor drivers. I ran Mark III off a dedicated desktop that I had to install a parallel port in. Once I had the parallel port installed then I could use that to interface with the breakout board and then individually with the stepper motor drivers and this system was so much more reliable despite it looking a little bit sketchy. Because this setup actually worked really well this is one of the few things in the next build that I'm actually going to reuse. All of these electronics were pretty solid and I was able to run 11 hour cuts without there being any issues. So after all of these upgrades my X carve was really functional and I was really enjoying using it to do some longer carves and make some art and stuff like that, but it still had loads of limitations. It was pretty inaccurate I'd say maybe to like half a millimetre or something like that, and also it would really struggle with milling anything tougher than aluminium, and even the surface finish on aluminium was pretty rubbish. It was also around this time that I got an internship at a company that did CNC machining for aerospace and submarine parts. This was a really cool opportunity for me to get some proper formal training on machining and CAD and CAM instead of just what I've done by myself and learned on my own in my garage. I also got the opportunity to program and machine some really cool parts on some absolutely insane machines which was so cool. Here's some footage of milling an impeller and this is actually the first full 5 axis part that I ever made. It probably took me about a week to program it and then it took about 6 or 7 hours to run the whole part. I think it came out really nicely. So after using some incredible multi-million pound machines like this and this, I realised that my little x carve CNC router was not going to cut it and I'm long due an upgrade. So it was with a little bit of sadness that I decided that the x carve had to go and I had to replace it with a new machine. I'm not getting rid of it, I'm actually reusing as many parts from it as possible in the new project. So the first part of this machine that I actually designed was the Z-axis and this was initially going to be an upgrade for the X-Carve machine that I was going to add on but then I realised making a Z-axis this big would be way too heavy for the machine and then I realised I just had to make a whole new machine. So I then drew out a concept design for a machine that would be roughly the same size as the X-Carve but just way more solid and rigid. When I'm initially designing and coming up with ideas, I much prefer to design on paper rather than using CAD, even if it takes a little bit longer. I personally just feel a lot more comfortable using a pencil and some paper. Now let's have a brief look at some of the design requirements that I considered while designing this machine. So the most important thing and the main reason I'm building this machine myself is going to be the cost. I don't want to spend more than £1,000 on the machine. If I was going to spend a lot more than £1,000 then I might as well just buy a machine that would end up being a lot more capable and accurate than what I can make myself. There are a lot of other reasons to build a machine, like you can make it exactly how you want it and then you know how to fix it and stuff like that, but the main reason driving this decision is going to be the cost. I'm doing two main things to keep the cost down. Firstly, I'm going to reuse as many parts from my x carve as I can, especially reusing the electronics that I made and reusing the motors for now. And the second thing to keep the cost down is manufacturing the entire thing in my garage by myself. There's going to be no external processes, I'm not going to send out a part to be ground or machined flat, I'm going to do that all myself in my garage, which will hopefully help keep it cheap. 
This means that as I'm designing, I have to consider the capabilities of what I can manufacture easily in my garage. A few more points is I want it to be similar in working volume to the XCOV because that machine was a good size for me. I want it to be much stiffer and more accurate than the XCOV because there'd be literally no point in upgrading if it was worse than that. And I'm aiming for an accuracy on small parts of at least plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. I'd be very happy with that. So those are the design requirements that I considered while making the initial concept designs on paper. So this is the paper design that I settled on in the end. Although this design looks pretty standard, there's a lot of thought and consideration on my end that went into it. The whole thing is a balancing act between how much money you want to spend and how good you want to make the CNC. With enough money, anyone could build an absolutely insane CNC machine, but it would cost tens of thousands of pounds. I'm trying to do it on a budget, but also keep it accurate. The stationary frame of the machine is going to be made from welded box section. I think that this is going to make it pretty strong. As you probably know, box section isn't very accurate, so for all of the parts that need to be flat, like the Y-axis rails, I'm going to machine them flat myself. All of the axes are going to be ball screw driven because I think this is going to give me the most accuracy, and you can get them fairly cheap online. All of the guideways are going to be proper linear guide rails, and hopefully that's going to make this machine really, really strong. I'm going to be reusing the NEMA 23 stepper motors from the original x carve machine for now, but they're probably going to be one of the first things that I upgrade, depending on how well they perform. I think they're going to be much too underpowered for this machine. The moving parts like the gantry and the z-axis are going to be made from aluminium to save weight. So after creating this initial concept design, I was pretty happy with the way it was looking. I think it's going to work. It was then time to move on to creating a CAD model and ordering in some parts. I made the CAD model on Fusion 360 as I was ordering in different parts online. And as I was ordering in parts, I would model them into the design and check that they would fit. And I'm 100% guaranteed that everything is going to work together properly. It was relatively easy to create the CAD model, it only took a couple of hours since I'd already put a lot of work into making the paper design very accurate, and I knew exactly what size all of my parts from online were going to be. Fusion 360 has a nice feature which lets you add in manufacturers parts so I could add in the exact parts that I was ordering from online. Unfortunately this feature is pretty buggy and it didn't work half the time which is a bit annoying. That then brought me to the finished CAD model which I showed at the start of the video. And as you can see I also modelled up all of the different joints so that the machine kinematics work properly as well. That means that I can check clearances on parts. Next step is to buy parts. The most expensive part of this machine that I'm paying for new is going to be the ball screws and the linear rails. As you can clearly see from the CAD model each of the axes on this machine is powered by a ball screw and then runs on two linear rails. The y-axis is the longest axis, is going to be a thousand millimeters long and is powered by two different ball screws which are going to be synced together. The x-axis is 900 millimeters long and powered by a single ball screw. The z-axis is then obviously the shortest with a 300 millimeter ball screw and a working travel distance of about 215 millimeters. So I bought the rails and ball screws as cheap as I could imported from China. I actually got a really good deal on it, only costing £200 for the rails and £150 for all of the ball screws. Obviously the Chinese import rails and ball screws are going to be very inferior in quality to proper ground ball screws and proper high wind linear rails, but I don't have enough budget to spend £2,000 on the motion components just for this machine. Considering the price of these cheap Chinese import motion components, I'm actually really impressed with the quality. None of the rails or ball screws seem bent and all of the moving parts move really smoothly without any grinding or play. Considering the x carve was powered by timing bolts which are fit for a 3D printer and ran on plastic V-wheels, I think this is going to be a massive step up and should give me the accuracy and rigidity that I'm looking for. I then went to buy the box section tubing for the welded steel frame. Since this part is stationary, I don't mind if it's really heavy and I went for thick 5mm walled tubing. This should make it really strong and rigid and mean that there's less distortion when I'm welding. I bought this all from my local metal supermarket and it's best to buy this sort of stuff locally and it's really readily available and not too expensive. As I said earlier, the X and the Z axis are going to be made from aluminium to save weight since these parts are actually going to be moving backwards and forwards and if they're too heavy, the machine's going to be really slow. 
The x-axis is going to be made from aluminium extrusions since these are really lightweight but quite rigid and I was planning on reusing some of the extrusions from the x-carve but instead I just bought new ones and they weren't too expensive. I'm then going to machine the z-axis from some aluminium flat bar and some aluminium plate. So that's the plan for this machine, now let's see how much money I spent on buying all of the components and see if I stayed below the £1,000 budget. So here's a list of all of the new parts that I'm buying including all of the steel and aluminium that I had to buy for the actual frame of the machine. So I ended up spending around £260 on all of the rails, about £200 on all of the ball screws, £230 on the steel to make the frame of the machine and about £150 on the aluminium for the X and Y axis. I feel like I got a pretty good deal on all of my parts and the total comes out to £840, which is really good. That's less than the £1,000 limit that I set myself. Obviously this isn't including any of the money for electronics, spindles, motor controllers and motors themselves, but I'm reusing all of them from the old XCOV project for now. So the next step is going to be to start machining some parts and I'm actually going to start with making the Z axis. I'm going to save that for next week's video since this one's already quite long. Apologies that this video hasn't actually included much building of the machine, more of the design aspect. Next week's video will cover a lot more of the machining of the Z-axis and it should be much more interesting. This is a massive project for me and I've been working on it for months and literally all the way through lockdown. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons who help support this channel and if you appreciate the amount of hard work and effort that I put into this video then maybe you consider supporting me on Patreon as well. Make sure to subscribe so that you can catch the Z-axis build video when I upload it and all of the future build videos for this machine will be linked in a playlist in the video description down below.